Christian clergy openly acknowledge that Jesus never called himself Son of God, however they claim that others did. This too has an answer. Investigating the manuscripts that make up the New Testament, one finds that the alleged sonship of Jesus is based upon the mistranslation of two Greek words Pais and Huios, both of which are translated as son. However, this translation appears disingenuous. The Greek word Pais derives from the Hebrew Ebed, which bears the primary meaning of servant, or slave. Hence, the primary translation of Pais Theo is servant of God, with child or son of God being an extravagant embellishment. According to the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, the Hebrew original of Pais and the phrase Pais Theo, i.e., Ebed, carries a stress on personal relationship and has first the sense of a slave. One this is all the more interesting because it dovetails perfectly with the prophecy of Isaiah 42:1, upheld in Matthew 12:18. Behold, my servant i.e., from the Greek Pais whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased whether a person reads the King James Version, New King James Version, New Revised Standard Version, or New International Version, the word is servant in all cases. Considering that the purpose of revelation is to make the truth of God clear, one might think this passage an unsightly mole on the face of the doctrine of divine sonship. After all, what better place for God to have declared Jesus his son? What better place to have said, Behold, my son whom I have begotten. But he didn't say that. For that matter, the doctrine lacks biblical support in the recorded words of both Jesus and God, and there is good reason to wonder why. Unless that is, Jesus was nothing more than the servant of God this passage describes. Regarding the religious use of the word Ebed, the term serves as an expression of humility used by the righteous before God. Two furthermore, after 100 BC Pais Theo more often means servant of God, as when applied to Moses, the prophets, or the three children bar. 122-20 Dan. 9.35. 3 A person can easily get into doctrinal quicksand, of 8 instances of this phrase, 1 refers to Israel Lake 154, 2 refer to David LK 169 Acts 4.25, and the other 5 to Jesus Mount 12.18 Acts 3.13. 26 4, 27, 30. In the few instances in which Jesus is called Pais Theo we obviously have early tradition. 4 So Jesus did not have exclusive rights to this term and where it was employed the term obviously stemmed from early tradition. Furthermore, the translation, if impartial, should identify all individuals to whom the phrase was applied in a similar manner. Such, however, has not been the case. Whereas Pais has been translated servant in reference to David Acts 4.25 and Luke 169 and Israel Luke 1.54, it is translated son or holy child in reference to Jesus Acts 3.13-3.26-4.27-4.30. Such preferential treatment is canonically consistent but logically flawed. Lastly and interesting, if not key, the religious parallel is uncovered, thus the Greek phrase Pais do Theo, servant of God, has exactly the same connotation as the Muslim name Abdallah the servant of Allah. 5 The symmetry is all the more shocking, for the Holy Quran relates Jesus as having identified himself as just this Abdallah Abd being Arabic for slave or servant, Abd Allah also spelled Abdullah meaning slave or servant of Allah, according to the story, when Mary returned to her family with the newborn Jesus, they accused her of being unchaste. Speaking from the cradle in a miracle that gave credence to his claims, baby Jesus defended his mother's virtue with the words, Inni Abdullah which means, I am indeed a servant of Allah TQM 1930 translation of the New Testament Greek Huios to son and the literal meaning of the word is similarly flawed. On page 1210 of Kittle and Friedrich's Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, the meaning of Huios journeys from the literal Jesus the son of Mary, to mildly metaphorical believers as sons of the King Matt. 1725-26, to politely metaphorical God's elect being sons of Abraham Luke 19:9, to colloquially metaphorical believers as God's sons Matt. 7-9 and HEB 12-5, to spiritually metaphorical students as sons of the Pharisees Matt. 12:27, Acts 23:6, to biologically metaphorical as in John 19:26, where Jesus describes his favorite disciple to Mary as her son to blindingly metaphorical as sons of the kingdom Matt. 8 12, sons of peace Luke. 10 to 6, sons of light Luke. 16 to 8, and of everything from sons of this world Luke 16 8 to sons of thunder Mark 3 17. It is as if this misunderstood word for son is waving a big sign on which is painted in bold letters, metaphor. Or, as Stanton eloquently puts it, most scholars agree that the Aramaic or Hebrew word behind son is a servant. So as the spirit descends on Jesus at his baptism, Jesus is addressed by the voice from heaven in terms of Isaiah 42 1, Behold my servant my chosen I have put my spirit upon him. 
So although Mark 1 11 and 9 to 7 affirm that Jesus is called by God to a special messianic task, the emphasis is on Jesus' role as the anointed servant, rather than as son of God, 